Hallelujah. They that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall, look, they shall fly and not faint. Tonight, as we convene, Convention of Saints, day number three, I believe that you are about to mount up with wings as an eagle. You are about to soar. You are about to go higher and you will not grow weak. Welcome to night number three, Convention of Saints 2023. Something is about to happen. The coming glory is our theme. And this year, mm, 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 if you are now joining us, then please, you, you've missed a few days, but don't worry. We are still going on. We are still going strong. It's Thursday. Tomorrow, Friday, we'll be here again in the evening. Sunday in the morning, we'll be here. And in the evening on Sunday, we'll be here for blood service. So don't worry, you've not missed too much. As I always say at the beginning, don't, 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 don't keep this to yourself. Call somebody, let them know we are live, we are on. They cannot miss this. Their blessing is here. I will go straight to my panelists because you, want, you really want to listen to these people today. With me is a powerful man of God. Look, my, I always have a personal story to attach to each one of them this man when i was growing up it's not like i'm that old take it easy <laughs> but as i was growing up i experienced god through him in a lot of ways on campus he guided us leading us with the teachings of the apostle general and it is my pleasure pleasure reverend doku <laughs> i i am so happy to have you uh -huh. reverend david doku is our lead and our president general for all wmg yeah reverend yeah. doku mm, Fedras. Pastor I am Fedras. so happy to have you here. I'm so happy to How be are here you with doing? you. I'm, I'm blessed and highly favored. And uh, I'm still under the covering of the Apostle Come General on. and the anointing of Royal House Chapel. And I want to thank God how far he has brought us as a church. Mm -hmm. It's amazing what we're witnessing at Convention of Saints. Come it's on. amazing. Come the on. presence, I mean, has... has it, you cannot compare it mm. to any other year. Wow. It's unique on its own. Wow. And after many years, after COVID, and having come being ushered into the oil dome, mm -hmm. it's so amazing. <laughs> it's so fulfilling. Oh, my God. I mean, I, I can't imagine how much we have missed the presence come of God on. and the glory that comes with the Convention of Saints. And I must say that it's, it's amazing. If you're not there, please, you're missing out. It is not the same watching on the screen. On. You have to be at the arena where the action is hey. happening. The presence is there. Come the on. power is there. The anointing is there. Wow. And the glory of God. Oh, my God. It's just amazing. It is just amazing. It is, it's not me who's telling you. This is coming from Reverend Doku. It is just amazing. The power, the presence, the glory. With me also in the studio, she is another firebrand. I've listened to her on the microphone. I've seen her lead. I've seen her groom. I've seen her help people come to the saving knowledge of Christ. And it's my pleasure to introduce to you my own, Deacon uh, um, Kafui. Deacon Kafui, it's yeah. such a pleasure, a pleasure to have to you here. A pleasure to be here too. Deacon Kafui in charge of Emmanuel Temple. And she's very active in Royal Ladies. I introduced you to Royal Ladies yesterday. Our women who are on fire for God, um, and, and it's, it's, it's amazing. Pastor, Pastor Kafui, yes, I, allow me to call you Pastor Kafui. Deacon no Kafui, yes, how has Convention of Saints been, and how are you feeling? Co Convention of Saints 2023. I had such a great expectation for Convention 2023, and I haven't been disappointed. Wow. You know we had a break because of the COVID That's for right. almost three, about three or four years, mm -hmm. not too sure. And so when the team came, the coming glory, mm -hmm. my expectation was high. Come on. So the Tuesday night when I came and I heard uh, Bishop Alotte minister, I said, oh my God, <laughs> I haven't been disappointed. I haven't been and disappointed. And after yesterday, I was just blown wow. away by the message. Come I mean, on, come on. Reverend, if you've listened to Reverend Yanni, mm -hmm. Apostle Yanni Wali, mm -hmm. you realize this year, he, he just came on another hey, level. Hold on, hold on. Don't go there yet. Don't go there yet. Hold yes. on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Charlie, right, right. yes. my people already, they are running with their vision. We're on they are fire. We're on fire. <laughs> wow. It's, it's amazing. We thank God for what he's doing so far. I, I want to talk to them about their experience, especially yesterday night. And we, we'll divide it into twofold. So we'll talk about their experience, how the service was, which part of the service was the best for them. Or of course, the whole thing was the best, but which part they enjoyed the most. And then we'll narrow down into the word. So if you're ready, let's go to them now. Let me start with you, Deacon Kafi. Let me start with you. Which part of the service caught you so much? 
you know, he talked about uh, the uh, Joel chapter 2. Oh, so you're already in the message. So I'll, I'll pick it from there <laughs> okay. and I'll connect it to the testimony All that right. we, we had okay. for the offering. Okay. And then he talked about restoration. Mm -hmm. And then you realize that Apostle General did uh, the salt covenant on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. So when uh, I had a call, I was, I was just thinking about what I, I was going to say. Mm -hmm. Then if you remember, the guy who gave the offering gave a testimony. Uh -huh. And his testimony had the salt covenant in it. Come on. And that the reason why he was able to, um, the doctors, you know, he had a doctor, there was a doctor's report that says that he couldn't have, the, the child, the wife couldn't deliver again after a series of miscarriages. That's right. And then they came to Men's Makers uh, Conference right. at Legon, yeah. and then Apostle General enacted a salt covenant. And then by that salt covenant and a sacrifice, they got a breakthrough. Mm -hmm that defied the doctor's report. Come so on. now he has six kids. Mm -hmm. And then you know hey, that normally... Six? six I bet Someone you, who wasn't supposed to have mm, kids? I bet you. Wow. Six. And then you realize that the program and facilitators are always uh, prepared ahead of time. Mm. But some way, somehow, he was put on program mm -hmm. to take offering yesterday. Wow. Quick talks about restoration. Come on. And then Apostle General does salt covenant mm -hmm. on Tuesday. Wow. So I'm like... God is doing something. God is doing something. God is about to do something. So Come on. when they talked about restoration mm -hmm. and he linked it to what we have lost during the COVID mm. and now God is restoring us mm. back and this man gives a testimony as to how he lost it all, mm. more than six miscarriages. Wow. But God restored him wow. and now he has six kids by the salt covenant wow. and by a sacrifice. I said, God, this people of God, is people convention. of God, it's, it's amazing, it's right? Amazing. Somebody will tell you, oh, you know, worship was and praise. But you see, even in taking of offering, someone's testimony there inspired and built up another person's faith. I'm just trying to tell you that don't miss any part of the service. I beg you, don't say that, oh, right now the preacher is not on, so I'm stepping away. No, you don't know what you are going to hear. That will transform your life, increase your faith, bring you to a higher dimension and a higher level. Deacon Kaffee, God bless you. That was powerful. Reverend Doku, mm. tell me. The I mean, service. Yesterday, the, the, I'm a man of worship. Come on. So, just like the Apostle General, very, very choleric, very robust. Mm -hmm. But when, when the worship presence and anointing comes of him, you see him humbled. You see him, I mean, like a babe. I mean, in the presence of God. And yesterday, Pastor pa just blew me. Wow. I mean, the presence was there. The power was there. The choirs that came to minister. And, and 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 Pastor Fedras, if you know, not all the choirs were from Ahimfie. Yes, sir. So we have some of our assemblies that have come together in area and they have formed choirs. And in some of the lead singers were coming from our assemblies. Mm -hmm. and, and that should let you see, that, that should tell you something. Mm -hmm. That the presence is not only here wow. at the headquarters wow. at Ahimfie, wow. but what you see here at Ahimfie is being duplicated hey. at the various assemblies. Say that again. Say that I again. Mean, what you see on the on the screen during our worship, it's not just only at Ahimfie or at the oil dome where the Apostle General is a head pastor, mm -hmm. but it is duplicated in all our assemblies, wow. in all our missions. Wow. What it means is that we are we are one body, we have one spirit, yes. we have one covenant, we have one anointing. Yes, and so if you fellowship with any assembly, with any mission, the presence that you're experiencing here at the oil dome, I can guarantee you, mm -hmm. you're going to have the same experience. And that shows the uniformity and and the maturity in spirit wow. because i mean you can go to a service and the worship is so dry yeah. worship leaders don't know what they are doing wow. choirs are disorganized mm. but here you come to royal house chapel and you see choir choir hey. you you see worship worship <laughs> and pastor pa just blew me yes. i mean i was in tears throughout wow. the ministration and you could see how people were pouring their heart out on the altar because for us in royal chapel the apostle general has taught us he says god fights your battles in your worship Come on. so the, the kind of battles that you cannot fight you cannot pray mm. you cannot read your word as mm. we've forgotten the scriptures mm. in your worship god comes in and fights for you and so i have no doubt that from last night from from the first day of the convention and now god is still fighting our battles in our worship mm. and so don't take any of the session ordinary at all mm. and yesterday i had my miracle through wow. during the worship i I mean, I, it was just amazing wow. for me. Wow, wow. In your worship, you are victorious. Mm. In your worship, 
your battles are won. My, my two panelists are already, I'm lifted, right? I can't see, I don't know if you can see me. I'm, I'm already lifted. Wow. That is such an amazing experience. I'll show you briefly a summary of, 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 of other experiences um, that people had yesterday. And, and one person or a team will want to share that with you. But before that, I, I want to prompt you. Listen, I don't know what you are doing. I don't know where you are watching us from. But the presence of God is, is active. It is, it is alive. It is tangible, even in these services. And no matter where you are, no matter what you're doing, all you need to do is connect. All you need to do is pay attention. All you need to do is be ready with an expectation. And now, let us watch the experiences of someone else. Praise the Lord. My name is Reverend Emmanuel Chivape, and I'm here with my lovely, beautiful wife. The Kindoringa. We are excited to be here in the Oil Dome celebrating Convention of Saints 2023, the coming glory. It's been an amazing time, mighty testimonies, the atmosphere of worship, praise has been awesome. And I love the word today, it talks about recovery, restitution, re-establishment. And the Lord who has begun this is definitely going to do it for you. I know there is a seat of glory with your name on it. You should be here 5.30 p.m. sharp to encounter your portion. And I want to leave you with a word, the concluding remarks of the Apostle General, which said, the miracles of God do not only come to glorify God, but also to silence your enemy and bruise their pride. That is what is in stock for you. Don't miss tomorrow. Your life is never going to be the same again. Lady Dickin Dorinda. Amen. So if you are not here yet, I don't know what you're waiting for. It is the season of glory. And the Bible said the glory of the latter house mm. shall be greater than the shall former. Regardless of what is going on in your yeah. life, the glory is coming glory and you should get coming. ready for it. Jesus. I can't wait to see you in the testimony ah. queue. I will be there and I can't wait to have you. God bless you and see you tomorrow. Awesome. You heard it yourself. That was Lady Deacon Dorinda and Reverend Chivape. And they told you, look, that experience, if you are in the enclave, if you are around, please run in, run in, run in. Oil Dome, Obeche Bilamte Interchange. Charlie, we are going higher. It's not runabout. Obeche Bilamte Interchange. Come over, come on here and come and experience God in all his glory and splendor. And now we will go into the word. Joel chapter 2, the verse number 32. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. For on Mount Zion and in Jerusalem, there will be deliverance. As the Lord has said, even among the survivors whom the Lord calls. This was the start of a powerful message. A message that transformed our minds. A message that brought healing, that brought change, that brought something that I can't even express fully. In words. Right now, we are going to go into the discussion and tell you what Reverend Yanni Nguale showed and taught us yesterday. And I believe you will love this one. You will love this one. Let me start with you, Reverend Doku. The word. Let's go. So, yesterday, the, the, the title of his presentation was Restoration, Resumption, mm -hmm. and Recovery. Wow. So, when you read from the verse 25, it says, This is what it says. It says, let me just read it. Go ahead. It says, and I will restore or replace for you the years that the locusts have come eaten. On, come on. The years that the locusts have eaten. Now, and he, he painted a, a devastating scenario about how COVID-19 had rendered some churches, I mean, they've, they've run to zero. I mean, people have left church. People are worshiping online. People are not even having the desire and we saw what COVID-19 did for, for us in Royal Chapel. I mean, not coming to church on a regular Sunday. And sometimes it got to a point, there was even a list. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, a quota for people to attend church. I mean, for the first time, people will come to church and they have to drive them home. I mean, never heard, never seen. It was unthinkable. It was different. But it happened. It happened. And, 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 and the, the man of God was just telling us, listen, whatever you have lost in these years, mm -hmm. whatever you have lost in this season by the devastating locust, God is about to restore. Oh, God on. is about to replace. Mm -hmm. Now, when God, is going, when God is restoring, God does not give you the same measure. Wow. He always gives you higher than what come you on, have lost. God gives you a double portion of what you have lost. And then he recounted, what are the conditions that would necessitate your restoration? Number one is coming back to church, coming back to the base, mm. coming back to where the covenant was enacted, coming back to the place where the blood and the power and the word of God is taught and you feel the presence of God. So coming back to church in itself is a starting of your restoration. Wow. Because once you are there and you are able to connect to the altar, you are able to connect to the covenant, like, like convention of saints, mm -hmm. it's homecoming for us in Royal House Chapel, yes. where we must touch base with the altar. Those who have traveled across the nations must return. Yes. And so once you return, it's a condition for your blessing. It's a condition for your restoration. Oh. It's a condition for your replacement. Wow. It's a condition for realignment and resurrection from whatever that you have lost. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. I, I feel like I'm hearing it for the first time. <laughs> but I heard it yesterday too. There is so much depth in this. There's, there's so much depth in it. Restoration, restitution. Uh, Pastor Kafri, yes. tell me, yesterday, the word. Yes. So he used, as Reverend Doku said, yes. Joel chapter 2, verse 25. Mm. Now when you talk about the locust, mm -hmm. the locust, they are insect, And they are one of the destructive insects you can ever have. Wow. When locusts invade your farm, mm. consider you lose everything. Wow. And once they enter your farm, they never leave until they've eaten every crop on the farm. That is why you remember when God was sending a plague to destroy Egypt, the locusts were one of the plagues. Wow. That tells you how destructive locusts can be. Come on. You see, the locusts can enter into your marriage and they, 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 they will just take everything out of your marriage. Push it. The locusts can enter into the life of your child. Okay. And a very intelligent child now becomes, an, um, I mean, gets an F's mm, for messy, no reason. Messy. The locusts can enter into your business. And a thriving business, you be you are on your way to file a bankruptcy mm. because a locust has invaded your life, the and they are very destructive. Mm. Once they invade, they are in to destroy. But the man of God said that they will destroy, but God is about to restore. God said that I'll restore to you the years that the locusts have destroyed. Mm. So this convention is bringing about restoration, mm. that which you have lost. For by this time, maybe there's somebody watching who has lost hope Come on. because the person has lost everything through COVID. Talk mm. to your them. business, your, I mean, your, you, you, some people they lost their marriages mm. because the, 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 the COVID was so destructive. Wow. It was a locust invasion in the world. Come on, very destructive. Mm. But God has brought us a message of good news mm. that He is about to restore us. Come on. He's about to restore your marriage. Mm. He's about to restore that Professor. education. Mm. He's about to restore oh. that business mm. that you lost because of COVID. Come on now. And he used a scripture in Exodus mm. that the God said that when he's restoring, he's not restoring you one, mm. but he's going to give you a double. Hey. God said for all your trouble, hey. I'll give you a double. I'll give you double. So this year, I want you to come to convention with an expectation mm. that whatever I have lost is in the past. Come on. God is bringing me restoration mm. and not just one, but he's giving me a double. Wow. You might have lost a big contract, but God is giving you double come the on contract. Now. Come on. You might have lost one business, but God is bringing you two, three, four businesses beyond your expectation. Right. So if you have not been at the oil dome, I want you to find yourself at the oil dome or make sure you connect to our social media hey. handles. Mm. Don't miss up for this convention. My expectation is so high. <laughs> you just can't afford to miss. Her expectation is so high. It is so high, just like mine, just like yours. And God will definitely meet you at the point of your need. You heard it for yourself. It's our season of restoration, our season of restitution. That which you have lost, that which seems destroyed, that which the enemy has taken away from you, you are about to be restored. You are about to receive restitution. You are about to recover and you are about to be recompensated 
said. Mm. Now, let me stay on recompensation because mm. you both touched on it, mm. right? Mm. Th there was a portion of the sermon where the man of God was talking about the measure yeah. of recompensation. Yeah. I, 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 let me start with uh, Dikin Kafui, if, if that's okay. Dikin Kafui, you already touched on it, but let's throw some light on it. What does it mean when we say God is recompensating us, but in a larger measure? So recompensation is like mm -hmm. you've lost something. Mm -hmm. Maybe you had uh, a cup of water. It, or maybe a glass is filled. I say, oh, I'm, I'm going to replace it for mm -hmm. you. But I'm going to give you, instead of a glass of water, I'll give you a bottle or a gallon of water. Wow. That is what God is talking about. And there's a scripture in Isaiah. And the God says that the poor and the thirsty cry out for water. Mm -hmm. But when you read down the answer that God gave to the cry of the poor and the needy, mm -hmm. God said that he will cause rivers to flow rivers. from the mountain. Wow. And so the poor and the needy, they are crying out for water. Mm. You are crying out for restoration Come of on. that marriage. Come on. You are crying out for the restoration of that one pregnancy that you lost. Mm -hmm. But God says you, they cry out for water. If you are thirsty, just a glass that's of water. That's 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 right. That's right. That's right. But God says, I will cause rivers wow. to flow from the mountains wow. and I will fill their desert and I will plant the acacia, mm -hmm. the, the olives mm -hmm. and the fair trees on mm -hmm. their desert land Come on. for somebody who was just crying for a glass of water. Wow. So that is what God is saying he is about to do for us. Wow. You lost one contract, mm -hmm. but I want you to picture it. A glass of water. Hey. God is giving you rivers. Hey. That is the miracle God is bringing us. When it talks about restoration. That is the miracle God is bringing us. That is the miracle. Reverend Oku, Reverend Oku, let's go. Now, so, so the word recompensation, uh -huh. what it means is that whatever you have lost, God is going to give you a, high, a higher quantum. Come on. Uh, uh, something that you cannot, your mind cannot wrap around. Mm -hmm. So the Israelites have been in, in slavery in Egypt for 400 years mm -hmm. and over. Yes. I mean, they lost everything, yes. lost their dignity, lost their identity and everything. Mm -hmm. On the day of the Exodus when they were leaving, God gave them an instruction. He says, go and ask the Egyptians whatever you're looking for. Mm -hmm. Now, when they went to them, they asked for gold, they asked for silver, they asked for the most expensive jewel. And the Bible said, and they plundered the Egyptians. Hey. A people that were in slavery, and in one day, they had become billionaires in one come day. On, come on, come <laughs> on. In one day, they were controlling the stock market. Wow. In one day, I mean, they were the ones that were in charge of livestock. Wow. In one day, they exited Egypt with so much wealth like never before and to this day the wealth of israel is still there come on i mean so what it means is that god is going to give you something bigger than what you lost you lost that husband you mm. thought that was it mm. but see god is bringing you a billionaire prophesy oh prophesy. my god prophesy. you prophesy. lost that contract hey. that hundred thousand contracts come on. but see god is being is bringing you an international connection come on. not here you will not be a local champion In the name of oh Jesus. my god i prophesy to you that master's degree Jesus. it is coming it on is the scholarship on. is coming. Is coming. You will go to Oxford. Hey. You will go to Harvard. I, I mean, I remember this this lady's story. Yes, sir. She's now in the U.S. pursuing a PhD. Wow. She had graduated from from SHS, mm -hmm. start home, and for some reason, somehow couldn't. She she had missed on on passing some of the subject. Okay. Her colleagues had gone ahead of her four years into university, oh, yeah. and she had stayed at home. Mm. Then she went, she came for for WMG camp. Heard about how people, I mean, have had a turnaround in their education. They said that, listen, I'm going to go back to school. Come on. Went and bettered her grades mm -hmm. and then applied to the university. Wow. I said, I talk to you now. Hey. She finished her first degree, mm -hmm. made a first class. Wow. Out of the first class, mm -hmm. became a TA at the University of Ghana. Come on. Throughout, then the, uh, uh, one of her lecturers connected her to do her master's in the UK. Hey. Big time, Ivy League school. Wow. Then she went ahead now doing her PhD, mm. about to hey, graduate hey, by the hey, closing hey, of this year. Hey. See, this is what I call recompensation. Recompensation. People have gone ahead of you. Today, she's married. Hey. Just this year, beginning after week of the altar this year, her husband joined her hey. in the United come States on, of come America. On, come this is what I call recompensation. recompensation. Where what you have lost, God gives you a bigger measure. Come on. You lost that. You lost that business. God is bringing you something better. Hey. Oh my God! Come you on. lost that shop. Mm. That shop mm. at Accra. Hey. But God is bringing you a shop in East Lagos. Come on, I Where it. you are not going to pay rent. Hey. But God will give you an investor that will say, "Listen, I have. I'm investing so much in you." Hey. 
what you want, come and give it back to me. Hey, hey, hey. Week of the altar last year, a lady mm -hmm. gave a testimony. She wanted to go into, into shoe. Yes. So she had applied, got, got somebody to invest. And then, you know, the person said, okay, how many pairs of shoes do you want? Mm -hmm. I mean, she quoted the amount. Yeah. And then they gave her the coat. Mm -hmm. Then she was like, oh, something had happened. She cannot pay back, so they should hold on. Mm -hmm. By stroke of share covenant speaking for come her, on, come on. the goose arrived. Uh -huh. Even though she hadn't paid she for hadn't it. Paid. It happened the second time. Wow. The next consignment came. She sold the first consignment. The next consignment came and she doesn't know where the money is, came, hey, is coming from. Hey. Who paid for it? And when she calls the company, they said that. It has been paid it's already wow. in her name. Wow. Because people will not ship things without your name mm. on it. Mm. So how did this thing happen? This is recompensation. Recompensation. This is where God gives you a miracle that you cannot think about. Mm. God gives you a miracle that you cannot fathom. Something you have not worked for hey. and you're getting it. Hey, 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 hey. I receive a double portion, a double measure pressed down shaking together running over can i prophesy to you i don't know what you have lost in this life i don't know what you have lost in your marriage i don't know what you have lost in your academics i don't know what you have lost in your business in your career in your ministry but i came here with a sure word for you here at the convention of saints 2023 i prophesy over your life you are about to be recompensated in great measure in double fold by the glory of god the coming glory, Convention of Saints 2023, it is your portion. Shout a big amen. Oh, I can't hear you from here. Shout a big amen. That's right. That's right. I'm going to read your messages. And then right after that, I'll show you another recap from yesterday. Maybe you didn't get to watch it. So let me just tease you a bit, okay? But my messages are here. And I, I, I am so in love with you for all the, the, the messages you send through. God richly bless you. So let me start. Esperance, Kayombo. Good afternoon, saints. You are the best. You are, you are, you are the best too. You are the best too. God bless you. Um, Okai Okai Bia says, the coming glory of God. I embrace it. Embrace it. Close, tight. Yes. A free year Sian Valerie says, the experience is the same everywhere. You said it. You said it. It's everywhere. Every royal house chapel you enter, you see the glory, the power, the presence, the prayer, the worship. It is the same. Esperance again says, I am in great expectation. Yesterday, Apostle Johnny Ngwali blessed me with the topic restoration from the book of Joel. He made me read the entire book. Wow, wow. Anyway, it's not 54 chapters, so you are fine. But yes, yes, it was amazing. Good morning, family. Some years ago, I used to have dreams that my teeth were diamonds and very shiny. But anytime I dream, I see them pulling off. Jesus. This is like five, six years ago. I took part in the salt covenant. Wow. And today, I had the same dream I was having years ago. But this time around, the teeth that came out were bad teeth, dark and decayed. I believe that the salt covenant has saved me. Thank you, Jesus. Please, I want daddy to pray for me. Hear me, hear me. The mere fact that you have even gone ahead to give the testimony, I believe your miracle is here. Your breakthrough is here. Reverend Doku, do you want to release a quick prayer for this person? I release the altar and the power from the Good. altar of royal house chapel. Amen. And I declare that in this season of the coming glory, yes, sir. may anything that wants to wrestle the glory of God in your life give way now. Give way, give way. I declare restoration in the for name you of Jesus. in the mighty name of in Jesus. In the name of Jesus. May the power of the Holy Ghost lift you up, O oh God, from the merry clay and place your feet upon the rock That's where right. your testimony is established, hey. your faith is established. Come on. I declare by reason of the covenant of salt, you are preserved, O oh God. You are any witch, any wizard, hey. any witchcraft, Come on. after your destiny, may they freeze hey. and may they wither even in the name of in Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I declare you are blessed, you are, blessed. You are, favored, you are favored, and you are delivered in Jesus' in mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. And this prayer extends to anyone who is requesting for prayer. Know that God is here and you are blessed. I am watching live from Wasa Agona. Hello, hello, Wasa, hello, Wasa. Wow. Wasa Agona Memphi. And love the program. Isaac Nyako Wireku, we love you too. We love you too. I'm Raymond Ramison Tretu. I have never regretted being part of this great family. God bless you.
I'm gathering my blessing for this, from this conference, and it shall be so. Good evening. I'm Theresa Esinam at Yogbe, watching from Obuasi. Hello, Esinam. Yesterday was the, opening, was the first opening of heavens for the coming glory. Can't wait for tonight. Esinam, this is how I know you missed one day. But don't worry, don't worry. It is still the coming glory. And tonight is the third night. Tonight is the third night. Miriam Wuredu says... Come on now, Pastor Kafui. Hey, it's the personal love for me. Come on now, Pastor Kafui. This is from Miriam Redu. She says this is in-depth exposition from both panelists. Good evening, Pastor. Kindly pray for me for healing from high blood pressure and a safe delivery and healthy and sound baby. Genevieve from the U.S. Genevieve, you are at the right place. The glory is coming. And what you have requested of the Lord he will surely, surely perform. Stay connected. Don't change that dial. Your blessing is here. Hey, this one, I have to read it. It's a thesis. Uh, uh, Martins, Martins in Ghana says, hey, hey, good evening. Please, I have a testimony. I have been having problems with my lungs for about a month now. The hospital made it worse. I couldn't breathe when I was outside and I couldn't live in AC. I practically lived with a fan throughout. Without a fan, I will be suffocating. People of God, yesterday, as Apostle Jan Ngwali was prophesying and made a proclamation about someone whose lungs are giving up on her, hey, I quickly breathed in and out as he instructed. And after I bathed some of the covenant salt, and last night, for the first time in the whole month, I slept like a baby. Hey! Wow. She slept like a baby. Oh. And today, I was able to step out and I could breathe normally. I am so grateful to God for your healing. Hey, listen to me. Your name is Martins here in Ghana. Martins, this testimony needs to be heard by multiple people. If you can just share your details and share this testimony in full, God knows that this miracle is bringing someone's faith up. This miracle is bringing a whole generation to the saving knowledge of God. I decree this this testimony is here to stay. God bless you for your obedience. God bless you. Final one, final one. Hello, good evening. My name is Ebuka. Ebuka. Hello, my brother. I'm, I'm partially Nigerian in my heart. <laughs> <laughs> I'm connecting all the way from Ma Ma Makudi Benue. Oh, Makudi Benue State in Nigeria. Hello. How are the people in Nigeria? I hope they are fine. The long-awaited convention of saints is here. I'm watching from my shop in my, with my sewing machine. Come on. Mm. I can't afford to miss even a day. And I pray that God Almighty will put a testimony on my lips. Guys, thank you so much. Thank you so much for always sharing your testimonies. And look, it's the simple hellos that make me smile and that make this, this whole session amazing. And now, like I promised, let's watch the recaps from yesterday. You will resume your position. Resume. Your position is about to change. I'm saying your life is about to resume. Those who have counted you out, those who have said you are disqualified, they are about to see the reemergence of you. Something is about to happen in your life. The Old Testament measures the capacity against the capacity. It's equal measure. That means eye for an eye. It's tooth for a tooth. But God says, that's not my measurement. I'm able to do far exceedingly greater, abundantly above all that you may ask or imagine in your life. Restoration in the Old Testament was estimated to be eye for an eye. As a prophet of God, I announce that tonight God must shake the place of government. Anyone who does not deserve to sit on the seat where they are sitting, clap your hands and say, Lord, fire them. Sometimes restoration must happen because your wealth is in the hands of a thief. Sometimes God wants you to physically touch the token, both physically, then there is the invocation of the spiritual power. God does not only perform miracles for him to receive glory and for you to receive a testimony and dance and shout but sometimes God performs a miracle to silence and to bring down the pride of the enemy yes
Welcome back. I told you it was amazing. We told you it was power packed. We told you our lives were never the same. Did you believe us? Did you see it? Yes, yes. Convention of Saints 2023, the coming glory. That was night two today night three tonight we are going to have the blessing and ministration of reverend steve mensa from the charismatic evangelistic ministry Oof, i can't wait i can't wait uh, uh, pastor kafui what is your expectation for tonight as i said in the beginning i have great expectation for convention of Saint okay. 2023 and today is the third day and in royal house chapel we mm. take numbers very seriously okay and today being the third day anything that is dead Mm. It's coming alive. It's coming alive. Mm. You see, when something dies, mm -hmm. Bible said Lazarus was buried and he was thinking. Okay. So the body lost its glory. Mm. But on the fourth day, so I'll connect it to the third day, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. On the third day, the Bible said Jesus rose from the dead. Mm -hmm. And so today being day three, my expectation, anything that is dead in my life, hey. whatever that has lost its glory in my life. Come on. It's coming up. It's coming up. My glory is coming like hey. those. So now what today, yeah, my expectation is come so on, high. Come on, come on, come on. Reverend mm. Doku, mm. they said the glory is coming like Buddha. Come hey. on now. Come Reverend on now. Doku. So, so me, like the prophet Ezekiel, uh -huh. Bible said, and the Lord carried him into the valley of dry bones. Come on. Where, I mean, the bones were dry and very dry. Hey. Now, meaning that it was lifeless, the situation was hopeless, mm -hmm. there was nothing that was happening. And today is the third day. The third day. Resurrection. Come on. On Good Friday, the devil was having a hey, party. Hey, hey. Parading on the streets of Israel, and Jesus was, was reduced to, to nothing. Can you imagine? Saturday, he was in the grave. Hey. Sunday, the devil thought he would still remain there. Mm -mm, mm -mm. But alas. Alas. Jesus had changed his location. Come on. So tonight, your location is about to change. Come on. If you are chewing the last in your class, you are about to change your position. Aye, 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 you, are aye, aye. you are coming on top. You are coming on top. If you are the one who is a single woman, hey. single or married lady, hey. your status is about to change. About to change. I see change happening. Yes, Lord. I see, I see joy entering into your life. Come on. If you're a businessman and your and your and your profit has been in two digits, get ready. <laughs> Six digits are about to enter into hey. your account. I see your profit margin swelling up. Hey. I see the glory of God swelling up. Any dry bones in your life mm -hmm. is going to receive the power of God, the presence of God, and the supernatural sound. Come on. Bible said, and there was a shaking, an earthquake, and a sound from heaven hey. that entered, and the dry bones, oh my God, mm -hmm. bones began to connect. Come on. I see some businessman. God is about to connect you yes, to your next level, Amen. to your investors, right. to your helpers. Come oh on. my my God, students! Oh, you know I'm a I'm a campus let's man. Let's go, let's go. Let's my go. students, are you there? Yes, sir. The school fees that you are asking, where is my fees Come coming on. from? You will not struggle to pay that fees because I see a full scholarship that is coming In your the way. Name of you Jesus. want to travel and do your masters? God is bringing you help. Tonight, I, I, that's, there's an atmosphere of help that is going to be created Come because on. the man of God that is coming is a teacher. He's, a, he's very prophetic. Right. He's prayerful. Right. See, if, if you are still at home waiting for us to come on live, please, you are doing yourself a disfavor. Hey. Iron your clothes. Iron. Get some trousers. Hey. Put on your shoes. Hey. Come into the arena where things are <laughs> happening because dry bones are coming alive. Dry bones are coming alive. Dry bones. Uh, let me come back to you one more time. Let's talk about uh, um, Reverend Steve Mensah. You know, sometimes people are just tuned in. They don't know who is coming. They, they don't know what to expect. And, and Reverend Doku touched on it briefly. What, what, what can someone expect? Reverend Steve Mensah. I think Reverend Doku has said it mm -hmm. all. He's mm -hmm. a man of the word. Okay. He gives deep exposition into the word of okay. God. Okay. And when it's come to prophecy, mm -hmm. you can't miss it. Wow. And, and you don't want to miss his ministration. You, you don't want to miss it. You don't want to miss it. Uh, please, I, I, yesterday I asked you to drop the food and the drink. Did you do that? <laughs> you don't want to miss it. You know, see, tonight the word is coming in power. The word is coming with all the glory that is weighted upon it. Listen, I don't know what you need 
in this life at this moment. I don't know what situation you find yourself in. Can I suggest to you that there is about to be revelation. There's about to be clarity. There's about to be some word that you are about to hear straight from the very God that you are looking to experience coming to you from our very own Reverend Steve Mensah and your life can never be the same. If you're wondering what you are watching, then you are late, but I'll still say it. Convention of Saints 2023 here on Powerline TV. Powerline TV, transforming lives. If, if, you, if you don't know where to tune in or you don't know where to tell others to tune in, don't worry. We're on Facebook. We are on YouTube. We are on Instagram. Just, just go, Sam Quanche Anchor. Find us, find us, and share the link. And let somebody watch. Let somebody be blessed. Let somebody be transformed. Now, let me come back to my panelists. Mm. Reverend Doku, mm. when you were talking, you spoke about uh, WMG. Mm. And you spoke about the youth. Mm. Now, I, I, I know people don't know what WMG is, mm. so please briefly talk about that. But I want you to also talk to a youth who is listening mm. and let them know how to position themselves mm. for what is coming, the mm. coming glory. So, so WMG is, is a movement for young people. Come on. Uh, I, don't, I don't call it a ministry. It's a movement. It's a movement. Because it is contagious. It carries the father's heart. Hey. Because, you see, the, the dream of the fathers mm -hmm become the assignment for the sons. Hey, and so <laughs> the dream of the fathers okay. become the assignment for the sons. Mm. And so for us, the sons in Royal House Chapel, we believe that the anointing of the Apostle Jenna is upon us. Okay. And we are running with the vision of Royal House yes. Chapel touching our generation with the power of God, mm -hmm. bringing people into his presence through prayer, praise, and worship, mm. and then creating an atmosphere of love, care, and fellowship. This is a vision that must be carried on Reverend to the next generation. Reverend Doku just said something mm. which I will use to chaperone you right into the auditorium. Mm. He said a presence, mm. a presence of prayer, mm. a presence of praise, mm. a presence of worship mm. a presence that is tangible mm. a presence under which we know that definitely there's an encounter that touches our lives mm. that transforms us i'm not going to keep you any longer mm. let's go straight into the auditorium night number three your life is about to change Jesus, yes, you know your hino. 
everybody say light where no man can see you has seen father we extol you the one who rides on the wing of the wind as a chariot tonight your children oh god we are congregated here to lift up our adoration 
thanksgiving unto you we give you all the glory and everyone will shout a big amen oh hallelujah convention of saint 2023 hallelujah give the lord a shout of praise hold it hold it hold it wait wait now the bible says real quick the bible says in the book of psalm 84 verse 11 he said the lord is a sun and a shield he said he shall give grace someone say grace he said he shall give glory someone say glory he said no good thing shall be withheld from them that walk upright Some, someone say goodness tonight one thing that is tied to your praise is the grace of god is the goodness of god and is the glory of god i want to turn to your neighbor say are you ready for the glory turn to your neighbor say, are you ready for the grace say are you ready for the goodness hallelujah give the lord a shout yeah. what some others in the house Mumra Mashena Mereba Wakura no Wakura no Mumra Mashena Nyoya Amenina Yasi Amenina Mumra Mashena Mereba Wakura no Wakura no Mumra Mashena Nyoya Everybody say Everybody
them, praise them. It doesn't matter what comes my way. The greater one lives inside of me. Everybody say. celebrate the glory of God anytime that the glory of God comes down there is a shaking anytime that the glory of God comes down whatever that is dead in your life comes back alive I'm talking to somebody here anytime you are faced with impossibilities you need the glory of God I prophesy over somebody here tonight whatever that is dead in your life is coming up Oh, I don't, let me try the people here. I think I have some believers here. I said, whatever the enemy killed is coming back alive. Give me John chapter 11 verse 39. John chapter 11 verse 39. Stand with me for one minute. Oh, what an atmosphere. John chapter 11 verse 39. The Bible says, Jesus said, Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of him who was dead, said to him, Lord, by this time, there is a stench, for he has been dead four days. Verse 40. Verse 40. Jesus said to her, Did I not say to you that if you would believe, you will see the glory of God? I don't know where you are and what is going on in your life. There was a man by name Lazarus who was a friend of Jesus. The Bible says at this time the man died. They sent word to Jesus and Jesus, in quote, ignored him for three days. The fourth day he decided to go to where Lazarus was. When he arrived there was mourning, there was tears. The atmosphere was not good. Everybody was in mourning. And then the sister Martha and Mary came to 
Jesus, if you had been here earlier, my brother would not have died. Then Jesus respond to Martha was that, did I not tell you that if you believe, even in this state of deadness, in this state of impossibility, because in the natural, there is no way Lazarus could come back alive. But when the glory of God comes down, every impossibility becomes possible. I am talking to one person here. You are confronted with an impossible situation. You are confronted with a death situation. But that says the Lord, the glory in come 2023, convention of saints, is about to change the narrative. It's about to change your story. And the Bible says, he who was dead came alive before the convention is over on Sunday. Whatever that is dead in the area of your finances, your career, your business shall live again. Somebody clap your hands and say, shall live again. Say, every impossibility shall become possible. For with God, all things is possible. Give the Lord a mighty clap offering. Please take your seats. Take your seats. Amen. Amen. Uh, my name is Reverend Jeffrey Adotutu, the senior pastor of Royal House Chapel Breakthrough Center in the Commonwealth of Virginia, USA. Oh, well, are you jealous or something? As you celebrate, may the Lord open your own door. And the, the angel told Mary, what I'm telling you looks impossible, but look at Elizabeth, your cousin. May the Lord open doors for you also. Amen. Where I'm privileged to be serving, and God has been doing amazing things amongst us in Woodbridge, Virginia. Once again, I want to welcome to day three of Convention of Saints, the coming glory. On behalf of the Apostle General and Mama Rita, our father and mother, you are welcome. Those of you in person and those of you watching across the world, online and also on Powerline TV. Let's appreciate those of us here. Let's welcome those watching us online. From, man, from uh, Tuesday, it has been amazing when Bishop Dominic Alote blew us into pieces. And then also yesterday, Reverend Gwali, I could not sit on my seat. It was the atmosphere and the anointing was at a different level. And tonight, on the third night, any time that there is a number three, there is a resurrection. Oh, I said any time that there is a number three, there is a resurrection. And so tonight, whatever condition that is dead, on the third night, it shall resurrect. Tonight, we have a combined choir coming from area five and six, Nungwa and Sphinctus. They are going to be a blessing to us. I want you to open up your spirit and open up your heart as they open the heavens to us. Let's welcome area five and six, Nungwa and Sphinctus. You will resume your position. Resume. Your position is about to change. I'm saying. You will resume your position. Resume. Your position is about to change. I'm saying your life is about to resume. Those who have counted you out, those who have said you are disqualified, they are about to see the reemergence of you. Something is about to happen in your life. The Old Testament measures the capacity against the capacity. It's equal measure. That means eye for an eye. It's tooth for a tooth. But God says, that's not my measurement. I'm able to do far, exceedingly, greater, abundantly, above all that you may ask or imagine in your life. Restoration in the Old Testament was estimated to be eye for an eye. As a prophet of God, I announce that tonight God must shake the place of government. Anyone who does not deserve to sit on the seat where they are sitting, clap your hands and say, Lord, fire them. Sometimes restoration must happen because your wealth is in the hands of a thief. Sometimes God wants you to physically touch them. Talking, both physically, then there is the invocation of the spiritual power. God does not only perform miracles for him to receive glory and for you to receive a testimony testimony and dance and shout but sometimes God performs a miracle to silence and to bring down the pride of the enemy yes we serve a mighty God how many of you believe that we serve a God who is unchangeable 
there is nothing that can change who God is hallelujah we want to minister to you holy is the Lord Say yeah. 
Convention of Saints. Tonight you are about to hear a testimony that will lift you up. This altar which I'm standing on speaks and is potent. Some of us, we are living proof of what this altar has done and can do. Because this altar picked us from the backside. And today, by the grace of God, it has placed us where we are. And you are going to hear a testimony to lift up your faith. If you are connected to this house, to Royal House, I joined Royal House in 1998 and I have not looked back and the Lord has been more than good to me. And I guarantee you, the Lord shall do the same to you. I want to invite Reverend Naka 
to help me with this testimony. Let's give her a mighty clap offering. Oh, put your hands together for the Lord. Is this conversion of saints at the oil dome? Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. With me is Lady Dekin Emanuela from Revival Temple, Spintex Assembly. As most of you remember, on 31st night, Apostle General told us that this year was going to be a year of contention, a year of spiritual battles and warfare. Number two, he said that the devil was going to attack breadwinners of families. Right. And so families must band together, wage a good warfare, particularly for the breadwinners of their homes. Number three, he told us that the 23rd of every month was a day to watch, a day to be spiritually alert. And on that note, families were to have family communion together, family blood time. And the church was going to have extra oil blood services. How many of you remember? Thank you. It is on this backdrop that this testimony takes place. Now, on the 23rd of May of this year, Apostle General came our way with Face of God. Face of God is a virtual service where Apostle General comes into our homes with a sure word from the Lord amidst worship, prophetic declarations, and prayer. And this, this time, it was so powerful because the blood service was included. That same day happens to be Mama Rita's birthday. So women in ministry organized a meeting for that day. Women in ministry... Women in ministry is a ministry for lady reverends, lady pastors, pastor's wives, minister's wives. And she happens to be a minister's wife. It is a training ground... It is a training ground where Mama Rita is training us for ministry. Now, that day, coinciding with faith of God, we decided to have a watch party. We all gathered in the Ahifi Auditorium. The service was beamed live, and we all watched. We all took advantage of the atmosphere and the fact that we were physically present to physically engage the altar. After face of God, Mama Rita led us in serious hot prayers that day, and it was so powerful. Now, she said she kept engaging the altar. Every time Apostle General made powerful declarations, she would go to the altar and so. And she heard a clear voice that said, pray for your husband. She picked a seed, went to the altar, engaged the altar, prayed for her husband for preservation and for protection. Her husband, the breadwinner of the family. Now, three days after this, exactly three days after this, he goes to work in the morning to drop some documents. And around this time, they were having plumbing issues at home. So he decides to go and pick the plumbers and send them back home to fix their problem. On his way back, he had a very strong urge to use the Spintex main road, which did not make sense. Because for those of us who know that road, we know that there's almost always so much traffic on that road. And it didn't make sense for him to use that road because they usually use the back road. But he obeyed. And just when he got onto the main road, according to her, her husband saw a black figure, a shadow-like figure with a sh black shroud over his face, covering his face. And suddenly he went off whilst driving. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe that was the spirit of death that had been targeted to their home. Right. I don't know what spirit of death is chasing yes, you. Lord. I don't know what evil forces are chasing you. But clap your hands and say, scatter. Scatter. Or we release fire from this altar into the camp of their enemies. And I declare that you are preserved. Yes. You are protected. Protect. You will not die before your time. Yes. But you will live to declare the works of the Lord. Who am I prophesying to? I am the one. Her husband doesn't know what happened, but according to the plumbers who were in the car, they said he shouted suddenly and started accelerating. Ahead of them was an articulator truck, and they were heading straight for the truck. With ingenuity, 
the plumbers decided quick thinking one used his hands to press on the brake and the other one had to steer the wheel away from the truck this put your hands together oh let's celebrate the deliverance from this altar this caused the car to somersault four times and interestingly it landed right in front of their shop on the Spintex main road now here is why the Holy Ghost told him to use the main road typical social media fashion rather than people going to help the victims everybody had taken their phone iPhone 13 even those who were using they were recording for social media and everyone was just standing there watching is he dead we wanna is he dead we wanna but her brother was in the shop at the time and saw the commotion going on he didn't know what was going on but heard the commotion and saw what happened and he said to himself who is the devil after this early morning i don't know which devil is after you oh but i declare that the power from this altar yes, is about to preserve you preserve. the lord is overshadowing you under his way the lord is preserving you preserving your household preserving your children yes lord her brother decides to come out come and see what was going on only to recognize the car as his brother-in-law's car he tries to go and help them and everyone stops him because apparently the accident caused fumes and smoke to start coming out of the car so everyone assumed the car was about to catch fire and everyone was afraid for their lives but he started shouting and calling for help and saying he's my brother help me so because someone recognized her husband that is how come people rush to go and help imagine if he had used the back road we would have seen it on social media and we'll be saying r.i.p gone too soon her brother puts him in the car rushes him to the hospital and calls her and informs her of what has happened amidst panic panicking and saying there's been an accident come straight to the hospital before they were able to pull them out of the car they tried their doors their doors had jammed so they had to break the already cracked windscreen to pull them out of the car the plumbers were fine they were okay but her husband was unconscious around this time he was rushed to the hospital by the time she got there her husband was still unconscious doctors had not been able to revive, revive him and they were now worried that he was going into coma and coma means that you are one step away from a woman they told her eh, madam we have tried whatever we can your husband is not waking up so at this rate maybe you should go to kolebu and you know when doctors start mentioning kolebu it means your matter is critical she calls her senior pastor reverend abu he prays for them invokes the altar invokes covenant i'm sure he remembered all the tokens that day invoked everything on the way to the hospital now the paramedics start panicking because they've done everything they can but the man is not reviving but not knowing the blood had gone ahead the of blood. them the altar had already the gone ahead of them speaking. as soon as they got to kolebu her husband's eyes opened and he started asking questions where am i what's going on and the paramedics were shocked because they had tried what they can and the man was not reviving uh, oh can i prophesy to somebody here tonight i don't know what man has tried and Come it looks now. impossible but now. the blood and the altar is about to turn it around somebody said i receive it i receive it can we have the pictures of the accident on the screen he is checked into the hospital they run tests several tests test upon test test upon test and reverend jeff there was no sign that he had been involved in an accident no broken bones no issues no impact no complications and the doctors were shocked because you are saying this man was involved in an accident where the car somehow started four times but nothing shows that he has been involved in an accident they said you know what maybe the signs to show later so let's keep him on for a few days after two days he was checked out of the hospital he walked out of the hospital himself now here's the interesting bit 
Even they themselves did not believe that the man was okay. They said, oh, maybe the machines at Kolebu are not working properly because with the impact of the accident, we must see something. So he was flown outside the country for a full and thorough checkup. And the prognosis was the same. His heart was fine. His spine was fine. His legs were fine. Are you celebrating? But the crown of his head to the source of yes. his feet. The devil meant it for, for evil. evil but, but the Lord God. meant it for good. See, I don't know what plans the enemy has for yes. your life. From now to the end of the year. Yes. But the Lord is about to preserve. Uh, the uh, Lord uh, is yeah. protecting. Yes. Every agenda of the enemy against your life life yes, every blood of the enemy against yes, your life Lord. the blood is going ahead of you covenant is about to speak for you so oh, i declare that you will not die before yes, your Lord. time you will not bury your children yes, the breadwinner of your home is preserved yes, your business is preserved Preserve. your family is preserved Preserve. your finances are preserved Preserve. so we any obituary with your name yes, on Lord. it we destroy that obituary in the name of jesus any coffin with your name on yes, it Lord. we command that coffin to catch fire I Glad that you are preserved in yes, the name Lord. of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Somebody shout the blood. The blood. May the Lord preserve you, preserve Amen. your family, the preserve your Jesus. husband. Amen. And what the enemy meant for evil, may the Lord turn it for your good permanently. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Let's welcome Amen. Reverend Thank you very Wolano much. Ago. Let's appreciate the Apostle General and our mother, the Mama Rita, for answering the call of God. And the great transformation that we have experienced when we decided to serve his altar. I started as a village carpenter so many years back. <laughs> but today the story is different. I am the managing director of Bogas Furniture Company Limited. <laughs> I am also the senior pastor of Royal House Chapel, Revival Temple, Spintex Assembly, a thriving assembly. Our transformation came as a person and as a family when I decided to diligently honor my father serve his altar and maximize the potential of his altar by planting my seed of money to see the hand of his God on my life and I believe after they said the rest is a story I followed diligently his teachings on seed and harvest because until a seed is planted, there wouldn't be a season of a harvest. It doesn't matter your binding and your losing. You could be a prayer warrior, but if there is no seed planted, your prayer can never amount into harvest. So therefore, I make a demand on his altar by diligently planting my seeds. And I follow his teachings. Genesis 8 22 asked while the every minute seed and harvest day winter and summer night and day will never cease we plant we sowed and today as I look back I see the blessing of God all around us the Lord has blessed us with properties in strategic locations all over this nation and I am here to say thank you to my father for showing me the way this evening you have the privilege to experience the wealth of glory as you take your seed you are not giving an offering but remember that it is a seed you are plan planting for your financial turn around. Please look into your neighbor face on your left and your right and say, neighbor, neighbor. Tonight, tonight an opportunity, an opportunity is, given to you and I is given to you and I to plant our seed. Plant our seed. Open your bag. Open your bag. Look, into look into it. Take a quality seed, a quality seed. because your harvest depends on the quality of your seed. Yeah, your 
and lift it up to heaven. Lift it up as we pray. Our God and our King, the God of our Father, the God of our Mother, on this altar you change some of us, our story, and today we are rubbing shoulders with the rich and the great. Though our background was a village, tiny village, we could liken it to a Nazareth, a village in the Nazareth, Galilee. But here we are today. Because we diligently obey your command. That when we plant our seed, then we will see your hand in our finances. We have come, Convention of Saint 2023. On this altar of my father, receive the seed of your people. And Lord, let the heavens be open. And let every seed planted tonight be watered. And let the reward come in hundredfold, in thousandfold, in millionfold. That some of us, even as we return tomorrow, may we come back with a testimony. In Jesus' name, we call it done. Shout Amen. Amen. So the ushers are coming round. Let's have a electronic announcement let's have a video of reverend steve mensa our guest speaker and father and prophet tonight I, i'm not expecting to continue you hear one of the 14 choirs that worship with us here in this building uh, on monday sorry on tuesday we saw prison showers um yesterday wednesday we saw uh, pillars of praise and then this uh today we, are, we will see covenant voices and then tomorrow we shall see voices in worship uh 14 choirs that god has blessed us with and uh, the earlier choirs that have been coming have been coming from the areas of our assemblies and today we had uh two areas areas five and six ministering to us together you just had reverend kofi walanyo Akbo, uh senior pastor of revival temple and the head area of that place reverend steve mentions video please Overseer of the Charismatic e Reverend Dr. Steve Mensah is the General Overseer of the Charismatic Evangelistic Ministry, SEM, a vibrant church headquartered in North Ligon, Accra, Ghana. The church has expanded its reach, establishing branches in several locations in Ghana, Africa, and other parts of the world. Never be afraid of the weapons of your enemy because of the God that you serve. He is married to the Lady Reverend Mrs. Jane Abba Mensah. They are blessed with four children. He is an international conference speaker and a prolific writer. He has authored many powerful books, like One Thing is Needful, Rebuilding Your Broken Walls, Surviving in Your Wilderness, amongst many others. He is the founder and president of Christ to the Rural World, an organization that reaches out to the rural world with the totality of the gospel, preaching of the word. Go down! Go down! Social action, medical assistance, and many more. He is also the founder of Day of Help, which is set out for persons with disability. On such days, an avalanche of gifts are speckled on them according to their disabilities and specific needs. He launched the project Send Mobility Village to shelter and provide livelihood for persons with disability in Ghana. This project seeks to remove all persons with disabilities from the streets and provide accommodation, skills, and employment to persons living with disability. His unique passion to see the gospel preached to the unsaved and his intense desire for God led him to launch the Steve and Stanley Community Outreach, which is centered on winning the lost in our cities. The inaugural event was held in Kotobabi Abavana, a neighborhood in Accra, further demonstrating the commitment to spreading the message of salvation to all. His trademark of love for souls, compassion for the poor, humanitarian interventions for persons with disabilities has left his footprints in many poor villages across West Africa. 
This has earned him recognition from United Graduate College, and Seminary International has bestowed upon him the prestigious honorary doctorate in Christian leadership in recognition of his unique compassion towards the betterment of humanity. He also received the most influential Changemaker Award by the Humanitarian Awards Global at the Labadi Beach Hotel, Ghana, on the 27th of August, 2022. He's also received the United States President's Lifetime Achievement Award on the 29th of September, 2022. The United States President Lifetime Achievement Award. He is also the immediate past chairman of the National Association of Charismatic and Christian Churches Ghana, NACCC, but now an executive honoring member of the board. He is an evangelist, an apostle, a prophet, a teacher, and a pastor to pastors. Ladies and gentlemen, please, with a standing ovation, kindly help me welcome to the podium, the Reverend Dr. Steve Mensa. Be patient. There are a few things I want to get off the way because once you minister, then the next voice we shall hear is the voice of Reverend Dr. Apostle Steve Mensa. The man who opened the convent on Tuesday is in the house. Dr. Bishop Alote and Mama Naomi are in the house. And then some of my sons have also flown in. Some arrived today. And uh, we want to acknowledge them very quickly uh, in the house. From Massachusetts, Royal House Chapel, Mount Zion Center. Reverend James Sapon Kuman Kuman, let's honor the son of the soil. Welcome, son. Oh, come on, you can do this gloriously better. Please welcome my son, Reverend Courage Heavens, Cross Gates Ministries, Ghana. Where are you seated? Reverend Courage, where are you? Come on, let's give God a mighty praise over there. From ICGC, Texas. Reverend Mattison Safo, where is he hiding and he has never come to say hello to me? Reverend Mattison, where are you? Oh my God. When I saw your name, I thought they were trying to deceive me. Please, let's welcome this great son. Can we, can we properly sit in, please? If you, ushers, I think there are some two spaces over there, if we can properly sit him. Thank you so much. Welcome my son from Covenant Ministries. Apostle Pompidou. I say Pompidou. I say Pompidou. Where are you? Come on. Did you come with your wife? Let's celebrate Pompidou and his wife with a magic club offering. They are members of my Fellowship, Covenant Ministers Fellowship. My son is in the house from Glorious International Worship Center, Tema. Reverend Emmanuel Tenda, one a very, very regular speaker over here. Come on. Let's celebrate the son. Do we have a seat there for him as well? How many seats do we have there? Only one. All right. God bless you, son. Thank you very much for coming to the Oil Dome. Welcome from New International Church, Prophet Nana Ajima and his wife. Where are they seated? Come on, let's give it up to them right there. Celebrate, celebrate. Let's honor the presence of Pastor Emmanuel Amu from Victory Temple, Winneba. Where is he? Come on, over there. Let's, let's celebrate the servant of God. 
One more time, let's honor all area heads of Royal House Chapel pastors in the house. Let's honor our assembly pastors who have traveled all the way from around the nation, around the regions of Ghana, the 16 regions of Ghana. Let's honor the presence. From Switzerland, Apostle Dr. John Sego is in the house. Let's celebrate our international missions, those who have traveled from uh, America, a United Kingdom, and uh, Europe, Belgium, to be in the house. Let's celebrate them with a mighty clap offering. And yesterday, the man who blasted this roof, the apostle doctor, Professor Johnny Ingwali and Mama Faith, Come on, celebrate the Father's oil. Your sermon went, has gone viral. And it has been celebrated all over the place. Ladies and gentlemen, let's celebrate the gift. Bishop Alotte, we want to hear your voice tonight. Come and prophesy to these people what they should be expecting tomorrow, Sunday evening, during the blast service. Because you are coming to continue where you left off. Come on, shout a big hallelujah. Even though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we shall fear no evil. For thou art with us. Come on, shout hallelujah. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When my enemies and my foes come against me to eat my flesh, they shall stumble and they shall fall. War shall rise up against me. My heart shall not fear. For one thing have I desired of the Lord, and that will I seek after, that I will dwell in the house of the Lord. Tonight I bless you in the name of Jesus, and I declare you will not die before your time. Hey! Come on, I'm not here. I say you will not die before I your receive time. It. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we receive it. 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 you will not die before your time. Yeah. Whatever is dying around you shall resurrect. Yeah. Come on, your finances shall resurrect. Yeah. The Lord sent me to tell you tonight that every financial pressure yeah. over your life yeah. shall give way yeah. to the power of God. Yeah. Can I have a big amen? Amen. Come on, can I have a big amen? Amen. Come on, can I have a big amen? Amen. Now hear me, hear me. It is not what happened to you that matters. It's not what happened to you that matters. It is what you allow what happened to you to do to you. Hey, say it again. You didn't hear me. I didn't rewind. It is not what happened to you that matters. Come on. It is what you allow what, what happened, happened to you to, to do happen. to you. <laughs> Somebody run and shout in the house. I am alive. We are alive. We shall live to fulfill our destinies. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God, I bless you. I bless you. I bless you. I bless you. Remember, Christ in you, the hope of I'm not here. Christ in you. I'm not here. The Christ in you. May you experience glory. May you experience the Kabul. May you experience the Shekinah. I decree in the name of Jesus. Where well from the north? Where from the south? Where from the east? Where from the north? I decree in the name of Jesus. Finances is more than what the government can provide. It's more than what your job can provide. It's the glory of God. Receive the glory. 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 
Antigo, I love you. I bless you. Thank you so much. When the glory comes, there'll be no words to say. Come on. Oh, oh, oh. church we serve a living God tonight it doesn't matter the problem that you came here with in this atmosphere you are never going to depart the same I remember a couple of months after I was done with my senior high school education my life literally came to a standstill the devil had a firm grip on my health and upon my education and for years, although I kept on serving God diligently in his house, yet still the problem kept on persisting. And in the sixth year of my predicament, when I was almost given up, according to the divine timing of God, God stepped into my situation. And by the time I could say, Chad, that strange illness had been checked out of my life. And the same God stirred the heart of the Apostle General through whom my education was restored unto me. Who told you that the Lord is done with you? Who told you that God is done with you? He says that I know you from before you were brought of blood in your mother's womb. I know you. And he says that before your battle started, he has already gone ahead of you to win that battle. Tonight we serve everything God. Why would he start now? He has been healing the sick. He cannot start now. You've never lost a battle. Stop now. Hey, you never, you never lost a battle. It is not in his nature. You cannot start now. From time to time, he has been doing what? You have been doing the same. Oh, oh, you cannot stop now. Come on, you want to declare it to the nations? You never, you never lost a battle.
the word of God which is coming tonight lift up those two hands quickly Jesus lift up your voice Jesus Jesus Because Metipedia for the lifter up of my head. He's the empire here for Jesus. The God that answers prayers tonight. Because we are out. Situation. Hallelujah. We worship you, Father, tonight. Give us open heavens and let your glory come. Let there be manifestation of the word which we are about to hear. And the word became flesh. Perform signs and wonders. Turn situations around. is coming tonight. Receive your deliverance.
To happen to you tonight, I guarantee you. Oh, bury my Jesus. People tell them something good is coming your way tonight. What a church. What an atmosphere. What a people. Give it up one more time. What a man of God. What an apostle. Please be seated. I want Esther to do a song and then I will open the scriptures. Esther. You called me out upon the water, the great unknown, where feet may fail, Ooh. and there I find you in Your grace abounds in 
faith with our borders. Thank you very much Esther. I want to thank God for the Apostle Julian. What a man of God and his beautiful wife Rita. What a friend. What a covenant brother. Amazing work. Amazing work. This is one of the most beautiful couple I ever met. They are always very happy. Doing great things for God. They are always dancing, jumping. <laughs> When you are depressed and you meet them, you are lifted. When you are broke and you meet them, you are prospered. There are givers, they give, they take care of people, and I love them very much. My wife and I, my wife Jane is here. Jane, my wife, my beautiful wife. She's like Mama Rita, always forcing things and making things happen. Hallelujah. I want to thank God for all the guest speakers. Uh, Pastor Nwale, Alote, my good friend, Governor Brother, and the wife, and all the speakers, and all protocols here. Observe. Say amen. I want to read a scripture in the book of Samuel, a very familiar text. 
in the book of Samuel, first Samuel chapter 17, and I want to read from verse number one, uh, first Samuel 17, verse number one, and the Bible said, now the Philistines, I'm reading from the King James Version of the Bible, now the Philistines gathered together their armies to battle and were gathered together at Shokob, which belonged to Judah, and pitched between Shokol and Azekah in a feast domain. And Saul and the men of Israel were gathered together and pitched by the valley of Elam and set the battle in array against the Philistines. And the Philistines stood on, one, on a mountain on one side and Israel stood on a mountain on the other side. And there was a valley between them and there went out a champion out of the camp of the Philistines named Goliath of God, whose height was six cubits and a span. And he had a helmet of brass upon his head, and he was armed with a coat of mail, and the weight of the coat was five thousand shekels of brass, and he had greaves of brass upon his legs, and a target of brass between his shoulders and the staff of his spear was like a weaver's beam and his spearhead weighed 600 shekels of iron and one bearing a shield went before him and he stood and cried unto the armies of Israel and said unto them why are ye come out to set your battle in array am I am, am not I a Philistine and ye servants of Saul, choose you a man for you and let him come down to me. If he be able to fight with me and to kill me, then we will be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then ye shall be our servants and save us. And the Philistines said, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. When Saul and all say and all and all israel had these words of the philistine they were dismayed and greatly afraid say amen when saul and not only the army but the whole of israel had these words fear drove into them and they were greatly afraid and dismayed say amen anything that you hear that puts fear in you is a Goliath anything that makes you feel helpless and worthless any appearance of anybody and the person's appearance makes you chicken out that thing is a Goliath Anything that makes you run with your tail between your legs is a Goliath. But God didn't give you the spirit of fear. And you have not been born again to fear. Therefore, that Goliath that has been threatening and terrorizing your life, tonight it must fall. So I am telling my message, this Goliath must fall not only must he fall some of the Goliath must die not only must they fall there are some people they must exit this world because if they don't die they will kill you and we have three more months to the end of the year I am not going to allow no Goliath to put me to my grave before my time so I have come tonight to bring down that Goliath in my family in my ministry in my life a Goliath must not survive I don't know whether the media people I don't know whether the media people can give me an image of Goliath. If you can go on the internet and show Goliath. Because the guy is 11 foot 9. Very tall. Very 
gigantic. And any time, and for 40 days, he came threatening the whole of Israel. He threatens them. He intimidates them. And an anointed soul and the whole of the army and the whole of Israel anytime the man appears everybody chickens out say amen and beloved I don't know about you but I'm tired I'm fed up and tired of chicken out because something and somebody has been threatening you a sickness a disease an infirmity a curse a problem within the bloodline of the family has been threatening you and you can see it coming here to you but tonight you have come to this oil dome to receive power to bring the Goliath down Okay, so that's Goliath. And that's David. You see that the guy is very tall. Very big. Very huge. Terrorizing everybody. Terrifying everybody. See, man? But tonight... Some Goliath be in your village terrorizing a tiny witch in your village cannot threaten you in Accra. Say, man, somebody who can read and write, a toothless old lady be somewhere who can read and write is threatening your life. It is not possible with all the knowledge you have with all your bible reading with all the convention nothing from your background must terrorize you this goliath point your finger and say this goliath must fall not only must it fall some of the goliath they must die anybody who has carried your image to some shrine somewhere and he's looking for it to you to die there are some people who have been marked to die before the close of this year i have come to announce to you i shall not die but i will live to declare the works of the lord not only am i living that person who carried my effigy to a village to destroy me that person must fall who am i talking to tonight Say amen. A collide is a situation that makes you, that paralyzes you. Mama Rita, one, uh, one gentleman told me something, Mama Rita, very sad. He said, in his family, nobody lives and crosses 50. By the time you are 40, 44, 45, or something, you must perish. Now, the die is not a problem. It's the way you die. First of all, you must die violently. That means through a car accident. And then you must lose a limb. Either they cut your head, they cut your, your leg or your hand. And that is how his parents died. They have to lose a hand, lose a leg, lose something. And you, his parents didn't cross 50. They died violently. His aunties died violently. They cut an arm, cut a leg, and you die painfully. Now he, this is my church member, was telling me that now he's also getting to 50. And that thought puts fear in him. It paralyzes him. Even though he's a believer, I shout, hoo -yah, hoo -yah, hoo -yah, hoo -yah, hoo -yah. the moment his mind goes to the fact that he is also nearing 50, fear grips his heart. See, man. <laughs> Today he has crossed 50. And I said, You are crossing 50, you are hitting 60, you will go to 65, you will hit 70, you will die when the Lord says so. It means that there is a terrorist in the family. 
there is a Goliath amputating and killing people in the family. If there is just a person behind that thing, not only is he falling, that person must die. There are things happening to us. There are human beings who have yielded themselves to, the, to Lucifer to use them. They must go home early. And tonight, a Goliath be somewhere is coming down. <laughs> See, man. Uh, one relative told me that he said, Mama Rita, listen to it. He said, We are nine in number. We are nine in number. Seven have died. And the death is by cancer. Cancer of the brain. Cancer of the colon. Cancer. One of them had cancer of the rectum. I can't, I can't understand how you can get a cancer. And this cancer is coming from where you are born. And seven of them have all died. Now they are only left two. And the two have found the Lord. And they are surviving. And I said, there is. <laughs> I said, Christ is made a big difference in your life. All, there are seven in number. All have died. And they all died. And that. There is a Goliath of cancer. Killing everybody. I don't know what is running through your bloodline. But it will not come to you. Neither will it pass you. Because in your time, you are the David of our generation. And you are bringing that Goliath down. You are not born again for nothing. You were born again to receive power to bring that thing down. The collapse of poverty cannot be part of you. you cannot be part of it. Everybody is poor and you are also poor. Everybody is failing and you are also failing. You cannot fail. You cannot be poor. You cannot be down. You cannot die their death. You will come to your grave at your full age. I don't know who I'm talking to. <laughs> But tonight, I have come to empower somebody to receive an anointing. Say amen. <laughs> to bring that Goliath down. If, look, if what killed my aunties and my sisters, and they didn't, who, who didn't know the Lord, and they perished, then I who now am in Christ. Why should I go the same way? It doesn't make spiritual sense. The fact that I am born again, I receive divine immunity. I'm exempted from what is destroying everybody. I cannot be poor. I cannot be a beggar because I am rich in Christ. I cannot follow the status quo. I cannot be bad. The difference must be clear. And today, tonight, receive power to bring that Goliath down. You cannot pass on it to the next generation. Your children will not become beggars. Your children will not become failures. That is why you have found the Lord. One of my members told me, she said, Daddy, we are six in number, six girls. All the five girls before me none is married but they all have children with people's husbands and now I am in this church and I see men chasing me all over the place not only are they men but they are married men and my sisters are saying that me me no more and my sisters are saying because and she said no I will not follow that nonsense this nonsense must stop tell somebody I will not follow that nonsense 
I will not follow what everybody is following. Then what is the essence of my being born again? What is the essence of my being belonging to a church like this? See, I hear you. This Goliath that is pulling everybody down must not live. See, man. So David <laughs> came to the battlefield and whilst he was talking to his brothers, then Goliath appeared. And when he appeared, everybody fled. So he said, well, why can't you guys flee? He said, well, this guy for the past 40 days has been coming here. The anointed king himself has check it out. And he looked and said, but who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? Amen. They told the king that somebody has come into town, into the battlefield, and wants to take care of this Goliath. So the king said, Yeah, it's about time. We need some action here. We need some action here. This place has become dull. This guy has chickened all of us out. So they brought David to King Saul, and King Saul was standing in front of the tent when something walked into the tent so he said you people said there's a guy who has come to fight with us say yeah, that's the one standing in front of you it's about this guy <laughs> he is about four foot six this Goliath is 11 foot nine he said my friend go and carry firewood for your mother because this battle is real then he made reference oh my god he made reference of the anointing he received from the prophet Samuel how a lion and a bear came to eat lunch amongst the sheep but after the anointing he didn't hide anymore he came out of the woods and told the lion your days of eating lunch here they are over so david told the lion put that animal down or you'll be very sorry for your life the lion roared with the animal in the mice <laughs> david said those days where i used to chicken when you roared, they are over if you don't want any trouble for yourself the lamp you have taken in your mouth leave it quietly here go and go other than that you'll be sorry the lion started running with the lamb in his mouth. And David started chasing the lion. Men, don't chase lions. When we see lions, we run away. From tonight, what you have been afraid of shall become afraid of you. What has been chasing you after some impartation upon your life, you are going back powerfully anointed to chase what has been chasing you. Say, I receive it two times. <laughs> Am I talking to somebody? He said, I took care of the lion and took care of the bear. And the God who delivered me from the power of the lion and the power of the bear the same God shall deliver me from this uncircumcised Philistine I have come to tell somebody make reference to what God has done in your life before do not forget that God who saved you delivered you, healed you and has done many miracles that is your reference Sometimes when you are faced with trouble, you forget what God has done before. But remember, he did it for you before so you can make reference to it and it will empower you for your future battles. First 
Samuel 16 from verse number 12 and 30. Look at it. 12 and 30. Look at it. First Samuel 16, 30. Look at it. And he sent and brought him. Now he was ruddy with that of a beautiful countenance and godly to look to. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is he. Look at it. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon him, upon David, from that day forward. So Samuel rose up and went to, uh, to Ramah. Now, in 1 Samuel 16, 13, he was anointed. In the same first Samuel 17, he was face to face with Goliath. The anointed in first Samuel 16 prepared him for the battle ahead in 17. Tonight, you are going to be prepared for the battle coming your way because there are some people who have been the target of the enemy. They don't want you to cross over into 24, but I have come to tell you that Goliath Say amen. So they told Goliath that your days of shouting here over there is somebody about to take care of you. Goliath said, Yeah, I did some action here. Because I've been standing here and nothing has been happening. See, amen. <laughs> so he was standing there ready for a fight when something like a dog crawled through the bushes. He said, Is that all this I can bring? A four foot six. But you see, you may be a small person, but the God inside of you, the Christ in you, hey, me, what Jesus, what me, moon. He had no sword, no spear, no nothing. And he, look at, bring Goliath again. He was armed, fully armed. Look at the height of it. You and I, that's how we look. Very small. But this guy, this guy, very tall, armed. But you see, the weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal. But they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. See, man. The anointing that Samuel received for which he stood boldly in front of Goliath. Somebody here who is facing a Goliath situation will receive that kind of anointing. Am I talking to somebody here? To be able to face the Goliath that is terrorizing your life. Because when he was ready to do battle, he was armed with, uh, with, uh, the, with, with Saul's armor. But he said, uh, Sir, I'm very sorry, but I haven't proven this. I have my own way of handling things. So they asked him, what are you going to use to fight Goliath? The guy went out and brought five small, smooth stones. He said, are these, the, are these the weapons you are going to use there? Use the weapons you are familiar with. Don't go for something you haven't proven. It is the same prayer. It's the same fasting. It's the same word of God. The power of the blood. The power of the word. These are the 
same weapons we have used because David in the bushes had been using the sling. And when the animals are straying away, he uses the slingshot either to flip the ear of the sheep or the, the stone will drop right in front of the animal and the animal will turn back and come to the flock. So when an animal is running away, he just looks at the animal, takes a stone and then whoop, 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 whoop. And then it will flip the ear of the animal. It means come back to base. And he has done that skillfully for so many years. Use the weapon you have been using for so many years. Don't use something you cannot prove. And what is what are our weapons? Prayer, fasting, the blood of Jesus, the word of God, the east wind, the weapon of the west east wind. These are our weapons, and these are the same weapons that are going to be used. See, when these weapons are coupled with the anointing, you are a little weapon. Somebody shall become very little. You will not see that guy in the office who is threatening you and run away anymore. There are some human beings when you see them, you chicken out because they are too powerful, too occultic. Some of us are working in corporations and organizations. You know, one of my there is a very popular bank in this country. I don't want to mention it, I don't want trouble. And this popular bank, every year, two ladies will die in the bank. Every year, for seven years, consistently. And I was telling my daughter, look, there is a demonic covenant in that bank. They are sucking blood to make money. So either you confront it and fight it and bring it down, or you leave and go to another bank. So sometimes, there are institutions that are that are Goliath themselves very powerful, very strong and you are very tiny but do not look at your size look at the God you are carrying <laughs> see amen, look at the weapon, this, a small stone in your sling will bring that mighty thing down Second Chronicles 20. The Moabites, Mount Seir, and the Ammonites came together as a coalition force against Jehoshaphat. And the Bible said, when Jehoshaphat heard of the three nations coming together against him, he feared. Sometimes when you hear something, fear grips you. And beloved, you know something? Sometimes... We behave as if we don't fear anything. But privately, people fear. Everybody has something he fears. Uh, say the truth. Everybody has something he fears. Fear, fear is to tell that you are limited and you are also normal. Say amen. Everybody fears something. Say amen. They came against Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat feared. I like the prayer he prayed in verse number 11. He said in verse number 11, 2 Chronicles 20. Behold, I say, how they reward us to come to cast us out of that possession which thou hast given us to inherit. Look at the next verse. He said, Oh, our God, will thou not judge them for we have no might against this great company that cometh against us. Neither know we what to do, but our eyes are upon thee. Anytime you, you tell God you don't know what to do, your eyes are on him, you empower God now to act. Because when you are in charge, you can't be in charge. But when you leave it in his hands, then you see him. And guess what? It was like a Goliath for Jehoshaphat. Three nations coming against him. Anytime 
something overwhelms you and you don't know what to do, God will give you direction. God will give you a weapon. God will tell you something that you will apply and it will bring your Goliath down. Say amen. Sing praises unto me. Worship me. Then he told Jehoshaphat, you don't need to fight in this particular battle. There are some battles you don't fight. Stand ye still and see the salvation of the Lord. I have come to superimpose that scripture on somebody here. Stand ye still and see the salvation of the Lord. Say amen. <laughs> For the battle facing you is not yours. The battle is the Lord's. Say amen. And he stood still. And the Lord set ambushments. And the people killed themselves. And he went and collected the loot. He didn't throw a bow. He didn't throw an arrow. He just followed divine instructions. May you hear divine instructions. It can appear to you in a dream or in a vision or a direct word or from the pulpit. God will give you an instruction. And as you follow it, that thing that you fear shall come down. Today, I prophesy to you anything that has made you afraid. Anything that has pushed you to the world, anything that has rendered you hopeless and powerless, it shall come down tonight. It shall come down. Say, I hear you. Second Kings chapter 5. This woman whose husband died and had two sons, the Bible said. <laughs> The creditor came and said, I am taking your two sons as bondmen. The appearance, the appearance of the creditor was like a Goliath to the woman. Because her two sons were going to be taken as slaves. And she couldn't take it. But the prophet Elisha gave her direction and that matter ceased. May you receive direction so that the matter can cease. There are people confronted with issues, but God will give you direction. Say amen. Say amen. So David stood in front of Goliath, took the pebble, the stone, a little stone. And slung it. The rate of motion of that stone, the velocity of that stone, coupled with the oil, drove straight into the forehead of Goliath and he came down. May your speed, your prayer speed, and any weapon you are using, may it go with such velocity and bring your Goliath down. Say amen. <laughs> I remember many years ago, Mama Rita, a Goliath rose up in my family. It was the Goliath of drunkenness. Everybody gets drunk. They beat their wives. They marry and remarry. Drunkenness is like a Goliath. It's a spirit. You see, alcohol is the devil himself in the bottle. Alcohol. It's a Goliath. I remember, Mama Rita, I remember I went to France to go and preach. I was a general. Then the people came and they said they want to go and kill me. So we went to a very beautiful restaurant. And then they, 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 they asked us to do the menu. I said, look, anything you guys will eat, I'll also eat. Then they brought the wine menu. So my guys were choosing the wine. They said, I should choose wine. I said, is he alcoholic? I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
I said, no, 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 I don't do alcohol. Alcohol is a devil himself in the bottle in my family. So I don't, I don't do, I don't, I don't do alcohol. He said, oh, no, 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 no. This, this wine, oh, uh, a, a, a glass of red wine is enough to circulate around your heart and make your blood flow and whatever. I said, okay, I thank God for it. You guys can let your blood flow. I don't want to hear because I know what alcohol did to my family. I know what it did to my father. I know what it did to my uncles. All my uncles died of excessive alcohol. So I don't do alcohol because something that you try doing it not that uh, is it is true a glass of wine can help you know you know whatever they are saying I believe that what we're saying was true but a man's speed is dependent upon what is chasing him so <laughs> I don't do alcohol thank God that God has put the alcohol in Kenke, in Yam, in, uh, in Banku, in so many things. So, when I eat those things, I will get the necessary alcohol to circulate my blood. I'm not going to drink no wine. <laughs> God is very wise. <laughs> it's a Goliath. It has, it killed my father, killed his brothers. They they can drink their whole salary in one day. He said, Go like it. He, they can drink their whole salary in one night. When I married my wife, I said, Honey, there shall be no alcohol in this house, no libation, no nothing, because this nonsense it must stop with our time. <laughs> Because the alcohol makes them misbehave, they beat their wives, they divorce, they marry, remarry. My father married, remarried, he married five times and died alone. When he was dying, none of the wives were with him. The alcohol, in fact, the alcohol ate him so much. My father was going to become one of the topmost fingerprinters because in 1974, uh, Kutua Champon took him to Scotland Yard to go and steady fingerprint and everything you know those are the days when you are going to abroche they come and dance bo -bo 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 at the airport so bo -bo -bo people came and they dance bo -bo -bo at the airport bo -do -bo -do -bo -do -bo -do at the airport and then they went <laughs> i don't know whether you, you, you some of you met those days and those are the days when uh, you are you, you are traveling you carry two white handkerchiefs and then you you, you say bye bye and then as you, my father had a nickname his nickname was Cantel. So his friends came and said, Can't tell. Then he waves his two hands, white handkerchiefs. Then he will go Kakra. Then he said, Can't tell. Then he will turn around. Then he will, he will wave Kakra. Then he will be going inside. Then he said, Can't tell. Then he will turn around. You know. <laughs> then as he was about to board the aeroplane, then he said, Can't tell. Then he stood now. That's, I still remember 1974. That's how he went to Scotland Yard. When he came back after two years, having been one of the first people to study fingerprints, he was now coming to introduce a certain technology of fingerprint to the country. When he arrived at the airport, Apostle General, from the airport as he landed, straight to the village. He didn't pass the house. He didn't straight from the airport. A bus ready straight. They went and killed some animals. He stepped in the blood, whatever. It is. They did so many things to him. Afterwards, you know, I was there like 12 years or something. Uh, and then afterwards, listen, afterwards, they went to do Thanksgiving service on Sunday. They kill animals, poor like they do things on Friday drink a lot of palm wine and pito on Saturday. Then on Sunday, they wear white wine to go and do that. It's nonsense. It's absolutely stupidity for you to go and pour libation, give thanks to smaller gods, and then on Sunday, come and give thanks to God. It's, it's, it's nonsense. But we all followed. When he came from the village to Accra, he was never the same again. That alcohol took a hold of him he drank himself drove my mom out drove everybody out married again drove the woman out married again drove the man out, until he died brother 
I'm 35 years in marriage now. I have four children, only one man, only one wife. That curse, that hold is broken permanently. I am forming a new generation. That hold in your family must break. That Goliath must come down. Go home and throw away all your whiskey bottles and all your Apetashi bottles. Throw because that is a Goliath in that house. It will suck you in. <laughs> Somebody said, oh, Reverend, you are trying to spoil my party. I'm spoiling your party because, brother, <laughs> what you are tasting bit by bit will draw you in. Say amen. Today, my life is a changed one. That Goliath of poverty has fallen. The Goliath of marrying and remarrying and remarrying has totally fallen. Say amen. Alcohol alcohol is never some of you when you are doing your 40th birthday 50th birthday uh, we have to satisfy everybody then you go and buy a lot of whiskey a lot of beer because your white friends and your your brother friends are coming and you want to satisfy my brother you are a christian you are you have a different constitution you have a life you are living you don't do beer you don't do whiskey Serve orange juice and mud. If you can't drink it, go home. Go home. I am serving orange juice and I'm serving mud and so below. If you can't drink it, go home and go and drink your beer. I will not do alcohol in my house. Alcohol is the devil himself in a bottle. And I'm not apologizing for it. And those of you who are doing alcohol in your parties, yeah, be careful. Yeah, then, yeah, be careful. <laughs> I don't do alcohol. I don't do second marriage. I told my wife, if you leave me, I'm following you to where you are going. Where you are going to sleep, I'm following you there. To go and lie on the bed with the new man you have found. We are all, we are all going to marry you. There's no divorce in this house. There's no violence in the house. Sometimes when I hear her shouting, I say, why are you shouting? You are going nowhere, I'm going nowhere. You are going nowhere, I am going nowhere. Come and lie down and let's make love. <laughs> I tell my wife, we background in here. We should be here in here. We are building a new generation, a royal nation, a royal priesthood. We are building something new here. We are not divorcing each other. We have married for 35. We have another 35 years to go. I'm stuck with you. You are stuck with me. So I told my dad, sometimes I see her trying to be loose, you know, where so I said, no, 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 no. Go and wear sexy things. Go and wear sexy things. Don't go and wear some hoya, hoya things in my house here. You are not an old lady to be very hoya, hoya. So when I travel, when I travel, I go to Max and Spencer's, I go and buy G strings, braziers, sexy things. I say, honey, be wearing these things because I'm not going anywhere. You are not going anywhere. I don't want you to become an old lady in my house. G strings. I buy all my wife's things, I buy 95% of my wife's things. Braziers, panties, dresses. I say, wear tight jeans, look sexy. Don't be wearing hoya, hoya, hoya things in my house. No. Don't wear those things. I want you to look sexy. Be sexually appealing. When we are in bed, use skills. Because I want to break the curse of marrying and remarry. I want to break the collateral of non achievement. Nobody achieves anything in my family. Nobody achieves anything. Broke the back of that spirit. Anybody here that Goliath is fighting you, you are going to receive an anointing. And from tonight, you are bringing that thing down. It must not survive. And if there is a person or group of persons 
who are taking your image, your family to shrines and things, that Goliath must not all, all only fall. That Goliath must die. Colossians chapter 2, verse 13, 14, and 15. Hey, where is my time? What does it mean? 23, 02, what does it mean? It means I have 23 minutes more. Is that what it means? Okay. Because I want to be within time. What do you say? And you, say and you, being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, had you quickened together with him, having forgiven you all, as you are seated here, all our trespasses have been forgiven. There is nothing against you as you are sitting here now. Then the next verse. <laughs> and blotting out of the handwriting of the ordinance that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. Next verse. And having spoiled what principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. It means that the principalities and the powers in your bloodline in the family have already been spoiled. There is no way they must succeed. So Paul wrote to the church of Ephesus, Ephesus in Ephesians 1.15. Look at what he said. Ephesians 1.15. Look at what he said here. Ephesians 1.15. He says, <laughs> Ephesians 1 verse 15. Wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus, and uh, 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 love unto all the saints, look at his prayers. Cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. What for? Look at it. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of God, may give you the spirit of what? Wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Next verse. That the eyes of your understanding be enlightened, that ye may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. <laughs> And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us well, who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ, when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places. And the next verse says, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named not only in this world but also in that which is to come and I love the last verse and hath put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church and the church is not a building know ye not that ye are the temple of the Lord so all principalities and powers have been put under my feet and I am the church. There is no way you will kill me before my time. I am not dying at your hands. I will cross 2024, 25. You are crossing over into the next year. You are dying when you have said, now let thy servant die in peace. God conscious be God conscious say amen the battle that you are fighting has already been won so you are standing to declare victory my sister you can't be poor you can't be unmarried a, 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 a witch from your village cannot stop you from a good marriage you cannot be defeated. You will not die before your time. Say amen. And that Goliath threatening everybody, it must fall. Not only must it fall. If it's a human being behind it, hating me, carrying my effigy to shrines, calling my name, and pouring libation, then you don't have, if you want to kill me, then you don't also have a right to live. 
You must also die. Say amen to somebody. Tonight, I'm not going to invite everybody. I'm inviting somebody who has a huge Goliath facing him. And the anointing that came upon David, that empowered him to throw that slingshot that brought the giant down. That same anointing is coming upon you. He said, you come to me with swords and spears and staves. But I am coming to you in the name of the Lord of hosts. Today, the Lord will deliver you into my hands. And I will take, he said, I will take off your head from thee. And I will, he said, I will cut off your head. Somebody's head must be cut off. Are you there? Are you there? So when I make the invitation, I'm begging you, not everybody should come here. The people who should come here are people facing giants that is carrying you, that is checking you out. You are going to receive an anointing like David. You may be a small girl, a small boy, but God will empower you to bring that thing down.
lifted. The two hands have said, Dear Lord Jesus, tonight, as I lift my voice, as I lift my voice, every Goliath, every Goliath in my life, in my life, in my family, in my family. In my bloodline, in my bloodline, at my workplace, at my workplace, in my neighborhood, in my neighborhood, rising up against me, rising up against to me, destroy my life, to destroy my life. As I pray, as I pray, lifting my hands, lifting my hands, as I pray, as I pray, clapping my hands, clapping my hands, as I pray, as I pray, kneeling at the altar, kneeling at the altar, Father, Father, that Goliath, that Goliath must come down, must come down. Shall we pray? Tally <laughs> Come uh-huh. 
Sula, Sule Bada, Rati Dasa, Ida Saba, Esenia Saba, Deli Bada, Ida Saba, Lido Saba, Yamada, Rada, Rada, Ida Bada, Yamia, Ida Your hands are Jesus. Anything terrorizing your life. Hey. Any person terrorizing your life. Jesus. Any situation. Hey. Any sickness. Hey. Any sickness in your gene. Jesus. Any diabetic condition. Hey. Cancerous condition. Jesus. Cancer of the brain, yes, Lord. of the colon, yes, Lord. anything that is threatening your survival, hey. we bring it down. Jesus. Be healed now. Jesus. Under this cloud, yes, Lord. and upon this altar, Jesus. I release you from the spirit of death. Yes, Lord. Death by accident, yes. death by poison, Jesus. death by enemies. Jesus. I break you loose. From anything that has tied you yes, Lord. to a wrong destiny. Jesus. Receive power. power. Receive power. power. Receive an anointing. Jesus. As you live here tonight, yes, Lord. you are not a chicken anymore. Jesus. You are not defeated. Jesus. You are not afraid. Jesus. The Lord has not given you the spirit of fear, oh, yes, but of love, yes, of power, yes, yes. and of a sound mind. Yes. Receive power. Power in your spirit. Power in your hands. Power in your going out. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Any hawk or vulture monitoring your life we pierce the eyes of that hawk. Anything. Any Jezebel. Any Jezebel planted in your life to bring you shame. To bring you disgrace. We paralyze that Jezebel. Anything thrown at you, anything done for your feet, anybody who has spread concussion in your office, we plead the blood of Jesus over your office, over your home. Anybody who turns himself like a cat and a dog to come to your house, we command that dog to die. We declare your liberty. You will survive in October. You will survive in November. You will cross over in December to 2024. Nothing but enemies shall hurt you. In Jesus' name. Say amen seven times. Two.
should not receive offerings. Look, I don't know about you, but if I were you, if I got some 200, some 500, some 100, I want to come and bring it to the altar and say, Lord, I am thanking you that the Goliath in my life has fallen. Look into your past. There's some 500 cities there. There's some 300. There's some 200. There is some 100. There's some 50. There's some money be there. You've given you a forever. Come and throw some money. Honey, take some money from my purse. Bring it to the altar. Sing something. Wonderful, merciful Savior. Do it. Everybody do it. Those upstairs. Precious Redeemer and friend. God bless you. Everybody take hundred cities, two hundred, fifty cities, five hundred, three hundred. Take something. Rescue the souls of wonderful, merciful, merciful. Everybody, precious with the precious with the
and we are still in the mood of sacrifice so those of you who want to use your gadgets your phone um, the Momo numbers the Vodafone numbers the USSD numbers are on the screen do it and engage the altar now those of you who are in the upper levels for the sake of distance I think that there are some altars right in front of you you want to get connected if you have never engaged the altar tonight please do now Goliath fell number one because David carried some sacrifices to the battlefield when he was going the father gave him bread butter and cheese to be given to his brothers anyone who carries bread is carrying the living bread that is sent from heaven the bread standing for the word of God and then the cheese standing for the spirit and the power then he gave it to them which is sacrifice and then Goliath was ready to fall tonight the word of God has come the anointing of David has come upon you now let your sacrifice go and let every giant in your finance and every giant in your marriage and every giant in your office clap your hands and scream fall say amen and so if you have never engaged the altar please engage he says if you can give a sacrifice of 500 go ahead four three two one fifty but definitely engage this altar because the word the spirit and your sacrifice will put goliath on the front on the ground for you well, right, come on let's let's do the worship and as we give them the opportunity those of you who are using your phone use your phone and engage the altar hallelujah those of you who are pledges from Sunday, Sunday, if you have, your envelope is ready, please come and drop it on the altar. On Tuesday, those of you who made pledges, please put it on the altar. And then yesterday, Wednesday as well. Hallelujah. Let's continue with the worship. And we are going to be closing you in some few minutes. I have some of my sons from parliament who are here. I will introduce them quickly. And then we are out tomorrow, Friday. There is going to be a healing, deliverance, and miracle service in this place. Usually, we give the Fridays, uh, the Fridays, WM, the World Movers and Sh uh, Shakers Movement, which is uh, our young professionals, our young students, uh, undergraduate, graduates, and then the young couples in the church. But people are saying that this convention is only for days and then including Sunday night which is white and uh, some are not ready to go WMG dress and so Friday tomorrow is optional those of you want to do WMG wear WMG those of you want to do uh, your simple smart casuals uh, you can do your smart casuals and then uh, those of you who want to continue your Christmas dressing you can continue because I am told that the thing is only four days and uh, they don't want the youth to take their shine from them and so tomorrow your dress is, is, is optional. Is that okay? Lift up your hands. We are still in worship and then we are still in sacrifice. God is good. You are in the spirit. God is good. My, my God is good. I was going to raise the same song. He made a lame. Come on. He, he makes the lame. And the same oh my God is who he makes the blind I see his grace and mercy on ending. God is good, God is good, my God is good. So I want to. I, I normally, any opportunity that I have, I like to showcase my sons here. This is the song from this house, Japheth Ajete. My God is good. Come on. He made a lame to walk, made a deaf to hear, and the same made hope. My God is good. He made a lie. I see his grace. Run to the altar. 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 Run
to the altar with your sacrifice, with your giving. Release your sacrifice. Goliath will fall. Every sickness will fall. Every bondage, every stronghold, clap your hands and say, "Break by fire! Break by fire! Break by fire! Break by fire!" Scream and say, My God is good. Shout, come on. God is good. God is good. My God is good. Sons from Parliament who are worshiping with us tonight. Let's welcome the Member of Parliament for Whole West, uh, one of the senior leading figures in the House Parliament of Ghana, Honorable Emmanuel Bejra. Where are you, please? Let's celebrate the son of the soil with the multi club offering. Please come up, come up, come up, come up. Let's give him, let's give him. The son of this house 
the MP from Ayensua, Ayensuano in the eastern region. Honorable Teddy Safo, Safori Adi, if you are in the house. Daddy, where are you? Please come, 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 come. Let's, let's celebrate. Let's celebrate in the house. Honorable Rita Odolesowa. Yesterday there was there was an, another MP in the service, but he, her name was brought to me late. Is she in the service? The MP, the one was Linda, Linda Okru, the Honorable Linda. Okru. Are you in the house? She she didn't come here today. Praise the name of the Lord. We thank God that you are here. We are using you as a point of contact. And then we are releasing prayer into the seat of government and the seat of parliament, the judiciary, that this nation will recover from our slumber. Please kneel down, stretch forth your hands. From this altar, we release the mercy and the grace of God into the atmosphere and into the landscape of the nation called Ghana. We have suffered many things in recent times. Economic slump, loss of jobs, poverty and agitation, pain and crying, graduates on the streets with no jobs, and yet a few people are rich and are becoming rich every day. Father, today we stand on this altar and we change the equation and we make a declaration. We who intercede for this nation, we who are the sons and the daughters of the Most High, that we carry your glory and we carry the mantle for change. For the Bible says, we shall be salt of this earth and we shall be light unto the world. So I use this members of parliament as a point of contact and all Christians in parliament and Christians in government and Christians in the judiciary and believers in the places of authority I pray that our lives will shine that this darkness that is trying to engulf our nation we defeat the darkness and we defeat the Goliath in the mighty name of Jesus from this convention we are releasing the glory of the Lord into the land. Let poverty die. Let the spirit of the decline die. Let our potholes on the, on the roads be filled one more time. Let money come into the pockets of the children of God. Let us put food on our table. Give us enough to pay our bills and our fees. My Lord and my God. The Bible says, except the Lord builds the house, the labor in vain that build. Lord, we invite you to build. 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 That in the end, the glory and the praise and the honor shall be given to you. We are crying for righteous people to rule us. We are tired of people who come faking, lying, manipulating. It shall be no more in the forthcoming election. If there is any devil who is coming as the angel of light, let the person not even see the light of day. Extinguish them before they rise in authority. Give us righteous people. People with development mentality. People who are selfless. People who are nationalists. People who desire the common good of all. They are the ones we are looking for. Lord Jesus, do it for us. And we shall come back to this same altar. And to give you praise and honor. In the mighty name of Jesus, we have declared. Let peace prevail in our nation. Let the light shine. Let the salt influence. Let the grace abound.
Let your mercy locate us and let your mercy find us. That we no longer become a laughing stock. But we shall be a nation of light that people will run into our light. As you said in Isaiah chapter 60, that the Gentiles shall run into our light and darkness shall be no more. Take praise, take glory, take honor. And only the people of God who believe, clap your hands and scream an amen. amen. This prayer also, I pray for any would-be politician. Those of you who want to come to, a pol uh, to a parliament and those of you who be standing for election next year and then the years to come, receive the power and the grace. If you say amen, I'll know you are in the house. Rise up for closing. Rise up for closing. Look into somebody's face. The members of parliament, uh, I'd like you to meet some of the men of God. Um, in the conference area so the protocol people will uh, Dr. Josego is in the house Honorable Betura early part of this year I took some MPs to Switzerland for a business conference and we were hosted by Apostle Dr. Josego thank you very much let's honor this servant look into somebody's face Say, brother, name the Goliath that has been threatening everybody in your house. And decide the future of that Goliath. Tonight, in this convention, if you don't want to decide for them, keep quiet. Go ahead. Decide their future. When I say in the name of Jesus, you scream a big amen. In the name of Jesus. It means what you have declared shall come to pass. Go to a second person. Go to a second person. Go to a second person. Say, sister, I am told certain Goliath must not only fall, but they must expire. I don't know which ones will fall in your house and which one will expire until you tell me. Open your mouth. And declare which one will fall and which one will expire. Announce their expiry date. Announce their expiry date. Announce their expiry date. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit keep you, you and your house. Goodness, surely. I can hear you. Surely shall follow you some of the days of your life. Some of the days of your life. All the days of your life. And you shall dwell in the house and you shall dwell in peace. I bless you. The altar is open. Engage the altar. Give somebody a ride. The buses are outside. God bless you. Tomorrow, Friday, 6 p.m. It is time. Miracle. Deliverance. WMG. Day. Dress optional. Dress smart. Come on.
what a display of the glory and the goodness of God. So today we realize that there was another dimension to the glory of God. The glory of God allowed you to pull down every Goliath in your life, every Goliath in your family, every Goliath in your office, every Goliath that is impeding your rising and preventing you from experiencing the coming glory. I don't know what you declared tonight. I don't know what declarations you made. I don't know what strongholds you pulled down. But by the time this convention is over, every Goliath in your life shall fall in the name of Jesus. Tomorrow we are going to another level. Miracle service with none other than the Apostle General himself. It will be something else and you don't want to miss. Stay glued to your seats, stay glued to your devices. Gather as a family, gather as a church, gather as a unit and experience the coming glory. Miracle service, our lives will never be the same again. As always, thank you for your patronage. Thank you for joining. Thank you for supporting. Thank you for giving. I assure you that your expectations shall never be cut off. God bless you.